I would like to say something. Um, I don't. I don't necessarily think that IE for Linux would be at all useful. However, what would be useful is Trident, uh, which is what IE uses to render pages. That alone would be useful. Somehow, I don't see Microsoft releasing that separate. Well, you could use it separately. Uh, that's what Chrome has an IE frame you could use on Windows, and what it does is it uses the Trident. Uh, it uses Trident to render the page, so obviously you can, because a Chrome extension does it. Okay. So um, I guess they they do have that open. So if that was released, even if it was something that you had to pay for, I think that that would be useful. Uh, I think they'd have a hard time getting anyone to pay for it, but uh, 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 web developers would pay for it. Yeah, that, that might be true. I, I, depending what they were charging for it, in some cases, I would pay for it for certain systems I have, just so I didn't have to boot into Windows to test that stuff. Although, you know, that's one of the few reasons I actually keep a Mac around is because Safari behaves differently on OS X than it does on Windows, and there isn't a Linux version of Safari. It's like, it, it, there's some weird errors that come about that shouldn't when you're running a browser on a different OS. And there's no logical rhyme or reason to them, it's just something that happens. <laughs> like, um, it, it, anyways, um, do you want to just transition into the... If, I didn't know if we even wanted to cover this anymore. Is it this was the other half of that debate? You know, it, will, will people ever attack Linux? You know, why would anyone make a virus for Linux? It, we, we've kind of both, all, all three of us have talked about this several times. Like, do we even want to rehash it or just let it go? We've said what we, we're going to say on that. There's always going to be more to say, but I, I think we've we've hit, especially <laughs> at least the latest virus, we've hit pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, my thing is that, you know, the reason that somebody would make it is the same reason anybody makes a virus for anything. Yeah, I think you said that, too. Right, <laughs> I said thing. that in the comments, and it's true. Uh, okay, now, before we get into, you know, the main topic of this thing, uh, comment one down here. Uh, I, I, shook, I subbed this in here because he makes a good point. Uh, and we were talking, uh, this is in response to us talking about I think this was actually, might have been in a PCV Mac video, I forget where this was from. Uh, but it had to do with the fact that people, the, the problem is people switch over to Linux and they don't do their research about what Linux is. And they just expect Linux to be Windows. I, why that's true, <laughs> it's like, you know, that's, people leave Windows and they, they go to Linux or they go to OS X and they're like, why doesn't it work like Microsoft taught me from day one? I'm like, because this isn't Microsoft. Um, I have very mixed feelings about that and that to a certain degree, a computer should be somewhat intuitive. To another degree... The last thing I think Linux needs to become is a Windows clone. I like that it isn't a Windows clone. <laughs> if, if it started becoming a Windows clone, there wouldn't really be a point. Um, I, it, I'm just wondering what y'all were thinking on that. Uh, it's, should people need to do a whole crap load of research to switch to Linux, or should they just be able to go, I've heard about this distro, let me pop it in and play with it. Yeah. I think that... Uh Research isn't necessarily important. What is important is the ability to use an online search engine and ask a question to it. That's all. Which is a skill in and of itself. <laughs> that, that actually gets, it gets back to the whole idea of having a like a beginner's guide that pops up when you first install a distro so that you get that, by the way, this is going to be a significantly different experience just letting you know. Yeah. yeah. Once you get used to it, you'll wonder how you ever did without it, but... You realize you need to get used to it first. <laughs> and that, that's something where, you know, the tutorial idea that we were all talking about would really, really come in handy for this, this problem. Yeah, it's like, I, 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 get, I get what he's saying, and to a point I largely agree with it, but I, I don't think that should be required. I 
did that before I switched to Linux. So that's how I found PC Linux. Because honestly, before I was like, screw it, I'm not going the Vista route. I, I want to go this route. I was like, you know, what is it? Almost four years ago now, uh, where I just began the process of converting everything here largely to Linux because I didn't want to screw with it anymore. Um, but I, I sat down and I did do a couple of weekends worth of research because I, I knew I didn't like Ubuntu and I, so I'm like, okay, what's the distros I want? And I think it, it, my, my logic led me over to PC Lens through my research and I'm like, I'd never heard of it. <laughs> And that's the thing, like the distros that are really user friendly and stuff, with the exception of Ubuntu and in some cases maybe Mint, you've really never heard of them. Um, and unless you do research, you're not going to find them and you're not going to realize it, it. And that can cause problems. That's right. Yeah, I didn't do my research before first trying out Linux, and that's why I erased my entire hard drive, including all my Vista partition with, you know, <laughs> files that had taxes on it, but... <laughs> I, I still have to laugh every time I heard that, because it's like, most people, when their first introduction to Linux is, I've erased my parents' computer. Because that is effectively what you did. It wasn't even really yours, it was the family computer. So it was mom and dad's data, too. And I'm like, that would just... Most people would not even try Linux again. They'd go, Linux eats my data, I, I'm not, no. <laughs> but no, you came back. You prevailed. You insisted. And now you love Linux. I'm like, <laughs> that's not the average end user experience if that something like that happens. <laughs> but yeah, it, it does take getting used to. Uh, I didn't get used to it for quite a long time. I mean, I got used to the basic use of it, but it came to, you know, uh, then I have to get my printer to work, and I had no idea how to do it under Linux. Uh, and then after researching for a bit, I found out it's actually a lot easier on Linux than on Windows, but that was, it was only after that I had to spend quite a bit of time researching all that. So, it, it does take a while to, to get everything, to get, you know, to know how to use it, but... Once you do, it is, yeah. But. Well, two, two of the biggest things that I've seen complaints about are, I switched to Ubuntu, I switched to Fedora or to whatever, uh, and why doesn't this game install and why doesn't this piece of hardware work? Yeah, the, the first thing is always, why doesn't this EXE run in Linux? Yeah. Or, it's like, well, I got news for you, an EXE is made for Windows. Yeah. I, 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 I Okay, this is showing that Mac is not my primary OS. I can't remember what the wrapper is for D a Mac. DMG. DMG, thank you, for a Mac installer. Thank you. Sorry, but you know, it's the same thing. I, I wouldn't expect that to run on Windows or, or Linux either. It's like, it's just, yeah. Hey, is, um, is dot .app another thing for Mac? Uh, I know that is for the, uh, the devices. I don't think it is for the actual uh, Mac OS yet. Oh, okay. That, that, that may change at out. some point. It, it, not with 10.7, but if my tinfoil hat theories are even remotely true, I see it going that way. <laughs> but but for now, no. <laughs> but the, the, what I always sort of... Uh, the analogy I normally make is you don't take the parts off of a Ford to a Volkswagen and expect it to work. Well, you can if you go the whole there, funny there car route. You have to make it work, yes. <laughs> But uh, that there, it, it's just it's not a guarantee that it will work. You know, two different models of the same type of car may not work together. Yeah, it's bad analogy, but it, it does apply a little it, bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad, but it's like yeah, it, and, and that's the thing. At the end of the at the end of the day, it, it's. That's, uh, you know, and they, they were making this comment to defend Mac, and I, and I guess it applies to that, too, even though I, I hate to admit it, but it, it's, um, I, I think this is one of the learning curve things Linux has to get over um, in relying to this, and that, that's part of why I, I think this would be a good overall topic for this show, like the first thing that's on the list here. Because uh, you can't do this right now. Largely, if you're a Linux user, you can't do this. You can't walk 
into Fry's, Best Buy, Office Depot, whatever, and with every single piece of hardware sitting there on the shelf, with every single piece of software, with everything, no, will this work with Linux? It, it's very, it, you have to do some extra research that you shouldn't have to do, but they just kind of ignore Linux. Uh, and, yeah, I, I mean, what, how hard would this be, really? Uh, I mean, what would, what would you need to add to a retail box um, so that it was, you know, as drop-dead simple as it is for Mac and Windows? Uh, I think we actually talked about this a little before. The, the printer that I've got, that my parents got me in, like, 2000, it's got a little sticker on it that has a window, uh, the Mac Finder icon, and a penguin. But that's, that's but that's few ago. and far and in between. Oh yeah, Major that, that, that would suit. That would work. Yeah, yeah. The majority of hardware doesn't doesn't do that. Um, and, and really, I, they all should do that. You know, it, it, if they all did that, it wouldn't be that hard. You know, it, it, that would require them to test more and to certify it. And which did, which system do you certify it on? I mean, at the end of the day, it's the kernel that really makes the difference. Well, no, 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 no. That's the thing right there. Because the, th this goes into another comment that I don't know if I put it in here or not, but that there's like 50 billion flavors of Linux. We should get it down to 10, and then we should move on. I'm like, it's already that simplified. The criteria for the box is something along the lines of, for hardware, this really is the criteria. It, it's must You have a tux icon, and the requirements are kernel 2.6 point whatever, plus. You know, very much the same criteria it is for the Mac criteria. Usually on most boxes it says something like OS 10, 10.4 Tiger Plus. But or something. depending on the device that almost, uh, it, it either depends on them having a generic driver available already, an open source driver that they are not, that the community has created, or for them to provide an open source driver because a lot of distros will just say, you know what, forget it. Well, yeah, but you unless know, they do provide a closed source one on a disc that comes with it or something, and well, I don't think I've ever seen that. Uh, no, I have. Uh, I I haven't seen that. However, there are some companies that do provide the drivers. Although, like I'll give you a perfect example: the Win TV cards, the ham prong cards, they're supported in Linux. You would never know that from the CD that comes with them. Because to this day, it still doesn't include the Linux driver on there. And not all of them are included in the kernel. But there is a Linux driver for all of them. Hmm. It, uh, um, it, it's one of those, like, if you dig through their site forever, you will eventually find it. But it's, like, it, it's, it's one of those ignorant things on their part that they just don't see the need to do that. And they really should. Um... And I mean, it's what what this comes down to is a lot of this hardware is using the same chipsets. You know, I, I've had this conversation with more than one Best Buy team. Uh, it, it's I, I ask, like they'll come to me and go, "Well, I know that over there is is Linux compatible, but the rest of this stuff doesn't say." And they're like, "What do they mean when they say Linux compatible?" I go, "Well, nine times out of ten, they mean the chipset that that's using has been included in some way in the Linux kernel version, blah on." And then they're like, "Well, wait a minute! I know for a fact that this, 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 this." They start pointing at ten other things on the shelf that they know because they are a geek. They're just not that kind of geek that all of these things are using the same chipset. They've just been rebranded. <laughs> and they're like, oh, so you mean all of these should work too? I'm like, if that one's supported, yeah. <laughs> if they're really using the same chip, then yeah. Yeah, it's like... Well, the day, that's what matters. Well, and, and see, to me, that's one of the reasons that this is largely resisted, because they don't want to admit that they're all largely using the same... They're charging you twice as much for a different name. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's like because, you know this one has the Cisco branding on it, but this one this one's only a Netgear. You know we're going to charge less for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, they're both Realtek or Reallink or Rawlink or. Yeah, company XYZ's chipset that's been in yeah. the kernel for five years.